Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Kurosh Mohammadi and I'm a senior hydrogeologist with HRV 2 k Engineering. This is the first episode of our online training seminars and today we are going to talk about construction dewatering part one. Okay, let's begin. Here are the references which I used. Uh, the main reference is construction, dewatering, and groundwater control by Powers et al. And second one is groundwater lowering in construction, a practical guide to dewatering, second edition by Cashman and Prim. Okay, I, I would like to emphasize that uh, the, the method I'm gonna speak about it is uh, based on the analytical method. The analytical design is based on the radial flow to a well. The typical analytical models are in equilibrium. It is assumed that pumping has continued until its zone of influence has expanded to where it has intercepted sufficient recharge from other sources to equal the amount of water being pumped. Of course, many dewatering systems do not reach equilibrium, but the analytical models can, with suitable adjustment, be used to make satisfactory equivalent of non-equilibrium situations. Uh, there are also numerical models that you can use, and they can also use for non-equilibrium conditions. We have two different equations. One is for confined aquifers, as you can see in the figure. Confound aquifers assumed to have constant saturation, saturated thickness, this B, and the capital H is the original groundwater head, and a small h is the intended groundwater head after dewatering. Uh, the capital R is the radius of influence, and small r or R sub W is the radius of the well. And this is for unconfined aquifers. Same thing, but here we have the water table. So capital H is the elevation of the groundwater table from a datum, which usually is a bedrock or an impervious layer. Uh, R sub not R not is uh, the radius of influence, and R sub W is the uh, radius of the well. In part one, we only talk about the dewatering for rectangular excavation. Again, to solve the equation in analytical form, we assume that the flow is from a line source to a parallel drainage trench, which a line source is the groundwater outside of our excavation, and trench or water level in the trench is actually the water level that we want to reach. In order to use the proposed analytical models for rectangular excavation, we need to use a circular system with the same area. And to do that, we have to calculate the equivalent radius by this equation. A is the length of the excavation and B is the width. We also need to estimate the radius of influence. The equivalent radius of influence that appears in the analytical models is a mathematical convenience because radius of influence terms appears as a log function. Precise estimation is usually not necessary. The most reliable means of estimating radius of influence is by Jacob analysis of a pumping test. But if you don't have a pumping test, uh, empirical relationships can be used. The most common one is the one uh, developed by C-Shard and Creolysis, 
I hope I pronounced it correctly, uh, which is give you the radius of influence as a function of drawdown and hydraulic conductivity. Remember, because it's an empirical equation, the units are important. In this equation, both h should be in meters and k must be in meter per second. Now let's uh, do one example. <clears throat> a purpose building has two levels of underground parking. The excavation depth is expected to be six meters below ground surface. The monetary groundwater level shows that the highest groundwater table is at three meters below ground surface. The length and width of the excavation are 20 meters and 12 meters respectively. Hydro conductivity from slug test was estimated to be 10 to minus five centimeters per second. And we want to know what uh, would be the expected groundwater draw dewatering to lower the groundwater table one meter below the excavation depth, and what would be the radius of influence. The bedrock is at 50 meter below ground surface. Okay. Uh, from the assumption in the question, we know that it's an unconfined aquifer. The original water table elevation is 12 meter above bedrock or in previous layer. The final uh, <coughs> elevation would be nine meters because we want to be one meter, the water table to be one meter below the excavated depth. So we want to bring down the water from 12 meter to nine meter, and we are using the unconfined. So first we calculate the equivalent radius, which would be 8.74. This means if we had the circle excavation instead of the rectangular, the radius would be 8.74. It has the same area as the rect rectangular. Uh, radius of influence then will be calculated from C chart equation. As I mentioned, hydraulic conductivity must be in meter per second. So it will be 11.6 meters. And by substituting it in, into the unconfined equation, the dewatering rate for this example will be 6.1 cubic meter per day. But remember, because we have variability in hydraulic conductivity in different parts of the site, we have uh, probably different elevations, Petra could be different, soil conditions would be different, but in analytical models, we only use one value for each parameter. To cover those things, we usually add a contingency factor, which is between 50% to 100%. Some people even using 200%. Uh, depends on the judgment. I usually use 100% for cases that the dewatering rate is small. For example, this case 6.1, I would suggest to use 100% and multiply that by two. If the dewatering rate is high, for example, is 1000 cubic meter per day, 50% is usually enough and multiply that value by 1.5. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Okay, uh, thank you for watching this video. And don't forget to write your comments below this post. And if you have any question, don't hesitate to send me a message. And stay tuned for more videos to come.